and welcome back to Entom Opens Up. Previously on uh, this uh, show, for lack of a better word, I unboxed and checked out the PlayStation 5. Now, obviously, I don't have the budget to do something like that every single episode, so we're going to be going with something a wee bit smaller this time around. In fact, a fair bit smaller. We're going to be checking out some Amiibo. Now, these little... Uh, statuettes here, mini figs as it were, uh, were released in 2014 uh, to go alongside the Wii U, I believe. And you can, you know, scan them and whatnot and they unlock various features which, you know, I'm not here to debate the gaming politics of, you know, make up your own mind there, but um, they're nice to have on your desk and whatnot. As you can see, I have a few laid out here already. I mostly go with uh, characters in Smash Bros that I tend to play, so I've been a fan of Mega Man, uh, obviously we have Sonic here, uh, Incineroar's pretty fun, my boy Shulk there, you gotta have Charizard, Samus is just a well-made figure in general, so I have uh, five more Smash Bros Amiibos today to check out, and I also have a, uh, a special Zelda-themed Amiibo set to show you, so uh, why don't I set up here and we'll uh, get right on into it. Alright, first two are the Belmont twins. Well, more like members of the Belmont family. They're not really twins or anything, but we have uh, Simon Belmont and we have Richter Belmont. Essentially, Simon's Echo, although as Sakurai says, it's kind of hard to tell who's echoing who really, because uh, Simon actually uses moves that Richter uh, basically originated. So, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, open up my boy Simon here. Shoutouts to uh, the Hell Dragon, by the way. He wanted Simon in Smash for the longest time, and so did I, honestly, because he's just a very classic gaming figure, and it was nice to finally have him, you know, in Smash. And he plays great as well. Richter is actually uh, my go-to of the Belmonts, but, um, you know, I had to get them both just for... Wow. That whip is uh, longer than I anticipated. Check that shit out. The detail on it is really nice as well. Good face. Check them Tims. Good detail all around on that. Let's give a, a 360 here. Very well defined. That's all I'm going to say on that matter. So yeah, we'll put Barbarian Jesus just down there for a second while we open up his um, cousin, I guess. As I said, Rick is my go-to. He's a bit more anime-esque. I don't know. Simon's great and all, but uh, he has um, a very standard personality, whereas Rick is a bit more eccentric, and I appreciate that sort of thing. Come on out of your plastic prison, my son. Just shut the box down. Yeah, there we go. His whip's uh, a bit more curled up, you know, he's ready, he's ready to whip, he's ready to give the victory fist to his enemies. Lovely shade of blue on his tunic there. Another 360, he's got the bandana. Just very nice in general really, two high quality amiibo there. That is a pretty great shot, look at that. Alright, so we'll uh, put them down there, and uh, we'll open up another amiibo, why don't we? Uh, let's see, which one's good? Yeah. King K. Rule. I could not, not pick up this guy, you know? Uh, double negatives. Whatever. But loved the Donkey Kong Country series as a child. Still do. Great 2D platformers, so uh, I had to have King K. Rule, you know? And uh, again, much like with the Belmonts, so happy that he got into Smash. People have been asking for him for like years and whatnot, and oh my god, he is a thick boy. You would not believe how thick this boy actually is. Jesus Christ. Nice shine to his belly. Of course he has a counter. He's got the crown. The bloodshot eye. Tattered cape. There's a nice touch there. He is pointing at you. You should subscribe to HFC if you're not already. And pledge to their Patreon. Uh, it's not me who's saying it, it was K. Rule. But that's just another nice figurine there. Shiny little jewel clasp on his cape. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that one. 
nice weight to it too. So we'll put him there next to Richter. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'll save that one for last. But uh, next up is a character who uh, actually originated in Super Smash Bros. Brawl, the Pokemon Trainer. Now, this guy was actually a bit of a bitch to find, whereas with uh, Simon and Richter and K. Roy here, I could buy them quite easily off Amazon. I had to get this, as you can probably tell, uh, from Japan. I had to import it, because this guy was going for like upwards of 80. And, you know, I'll pay like 20 for an Amiibo, but I'm not paying that much, so um, let's just get him in here and uh, get him out of his plastic prison. And I, I just really like the idea of Pokemon Trainer, like having a three in one sort of character. We've sort of got that again with Pyra and Mithra, so uh, if their amiibo come out, I might grab them as well. But uh, obviously, based on Red from, uh, well, Pokemon Red, he is a shouty boy. Look at him. Just a very well made amiibo. I mean, look at the detail on the Pokeball, though. Kind of insane, really. And even the detail on his jeans. It's kind of nuts. You got the backpack there, keeping all your Pokeballs and antidotes and potions, etc. And he is also pointing, saying, You, you should subscribe to HFC. Okay, I'll stop doing that. It's kind of obnoxious. But, uh, yeah, he goes very nicely with uh, Charizard over here, which was actually one of his uh, Pokemon, along with Squirtle and Ivysaur. But uh, when Pokemon Trainer didn't return to uh, Super Smash Bros. 4, Charizard was made his own character. So, uh, yeah. And we have one more amiibo to show off from Smash Bros. And this one I'm uh, very excited about. I'm so happy to have finally gotten these characters in Smash and, you know, amiibo to go along with them. It is, of course, Banjo-Kazooie. If you had told me that Banjo would have been in Smash, I would have called you a liar. But both me and Vinny Vinesauce both love the banjo. I don't know, Vinny. I just hope he's having a good day right now. So happy when the uh, banjo was announced at uh, E3 2019. That was the same year that Breath of the Wild 2 got announced. That E3 was insane. Now, I'm recording this in April of 2021. You know, a few months before... E3, and I just hope that we can get a show as good as 2019, because, you know, COVID kind of messed things up in 2020, but, uh, yeah, just take a look at that. Amazing. Obviously, you've got Kazooie up there. Banjo's shark tooth necklace. you got the Jiggy there. The texturing kind of makes it look like cheese, but that's fine. I'm not that nitpicky. Yeah, you got the backpack with the, uh, Rareware logo there. The iconic shorts. These Amiibo are just very well made. Like the Smash Bros. Ultimate ones in particular. I'm quite impressed, actually. So, yeah. Banjo-Kazooie. Really happy to have you guys in Smash. And these are just some great Amiibo right there. But uh, now I have to show you something that kind of celebrates the conclusion of our Breath of the Wild playthrough. And uh, I think you're going to like this, so if you'll give me a second, I'll just maneuver all these guys and make some space. Alrighty, here we go. It's so hefty, it actually takes up most of the frame. It is the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Champion pack. We have Urbosa of the Gerudo, Rivali of the Rito, Mifa of the Zora, and Daruk of the Goron. Just a great cast of characters in general really. I never really did look at the back of these, but uh, in particular, these amiibo, when you scan them, give you particular items. Oh, they're the champion items that you get for beating the Divine Beasts in the first place, so uh, that's cool. Very interesting. So let's go ahead and open these up and get a little bit of a shufty at them. Oh, I feel like a kid again opening toys like this and whatnot, because usually I'm like opening card packs or unboxing, I don't know, like, minifigs or something. This is, you know, just figurines, essentially. You know, I'm not really sure where I draw the line, but, uh, hey, it's a nice thing to check out anyway. And they're all apparently very well made, so uh, I'm looking forward to checking these guys out. They're hefty fuckers as well, much like uh, 
K rule and so on. All right, steady now, Tom. All right, got a Bosa. We got Rivali. Don't want to break that uh, trident there, Tom. On oh, Daruk's the heftiest of them all. Jesus. All right, first things first. Hmm. Yeah, Abosa, chieftain of the Gerudo. Let's have a look at the face first and foremost, if it will uh, focus. Yeah. Hmm. That face is okay, I guess. We have her uh, scimitar. We got the champion garb. Not too bad. Not too shabby. The face is a little bit. Hmm. But um. Oh, we've got the uh, the shield there as well. This is the pose she makes actually in the Champions Ballad when she protects Zelda from those two Yiga assassins, which is pretty cool. So we put that there. Ravali, <laughs> not Falco of the Rito. We've got his falcon bow there, which isn't the best quality, I'm going to be honest, but the figure itself is great. So uh, got his little braids there. He's looking at you, telling you to subscribe. I'm sorry, sorry, I'm going to stop doing that. It's getting obnoxious, I know. And his little feet, if you're into that sort of thing. So we got Rivali there. And what about Mifa? Link's helpless suitor. Hmm. The face is probably about as good as you could get for Mifa, I'm going to be honest. She has a bit of a flat face overall. But uh, the trident looks pretty great. You got the champion's garb there. Nice ornate patterns on her fins. Come on, camera, focus a little bit, please. I think it's because there's like so many amiibo around. But uh, yeah, overall, that one looks pretty good. And of course, we have what's probably the best of the pack, honestly. Daruk's protection is now ready to roll. Uh, big old belly, chains, wonderful hair. Look at him, he's so happy. He's got the Stone Smasher, I believe that's called. They all have their unique weapons, which is uh, pretty nice. And overall, just well-made amiibo, really. I think out of the four, uh, Daruk might be my favourite. Like, Obosa, pretty good. Rivali, decent. Mifa, not too bad. But uh, you got to have all four of them together, because they are... The champions. And yeah, that'll bring us to the end of um, this particular Entom opens up, guys, at least in terms of product demonstration, because, you know, they're amiibo and whatnot. Uh, I'm not going to, like, boot up the game just to show you what's going on. You can check out other videos for that. But now I'm going to answer questions I have backlogged from our patrons, because Entom opens up is a double meaning. It's obviously unboxing uh, and, you know, opening card packs and so on. But it's also opening up emotionally as well and answering questions. So uh, I'm going to switch over to some random gameplay. And uh, let's get to answering these questions. Go uh -huh. Alrighty, let's answer some questions. Uh, you may see the same users popping up, you know, again and again. That's mostly because, like I said, these are backlogged. So it's just like people asking stuff from month to month. So uh, let's check out this first one here. Cruel12 asks, So Tom, we know that Grookey, Scorebunny, and Sobblefano Evo are all monotypes. Uh, thank you for teaching me what that means, by the way. I assume he meant to say. But if they were a double type, what would you make them? For me, it would be Fire Electric, Grass Ground, and Water Dark. You know, Cruel, um, I actually agree 100% there. You know, having a Fire Electric footballer body would be pretty cool. You know, Grass Ground, just a nice solid combo you know with the likes of torterra and water dark obviously has been made famous through the likes of uh greninja and so on so um yeah no problems there whatsoever thank you for your question shadow reaper asks tell us your least favorite shop to go to well shadow that's a bit of a random question a bit of a weird one to uh, ask a shut in um but probably the idiot store because they're always out of me. <laughs> Thank you for your question.
We've got one from uh, Gold here, Gold member, I believe. What hopes do you have for the Pokemon 25th anniversary? You can tell how far back this backlog goes, because obviously we have Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and uh, Pokemon Legends Arceus right now. I just hope these games turn out good. Uh, Arceus needs a lot more polishing, so uh, hopefully they're in the stages of doing that right now, and there's more to do in the overworld than just capture Pokemon. Um, but otherwise... You know, I just hope they're good. <laughs> That's the only stipulations I have for these games, so thank you, Gold. Ronald D. Rankin asks, Have you ever done or thought about doing a living dex for Pokemon? I'm currently working on one for Pokemon Home. You know, I've heard the term living dex a few times. I need to actually look this up. What is a living dex? In brief, a living dex is not just a complete national Pokedex of Pokemon Core, it's having a living version of all 108 currently available Pokemon stored in your boxes or Pokemon Bank. A regular national dex, by contrast, just requires you to have had those Pokemon in your possession at some point in time. That's uh, 806, just in case I said something different there. You know, I talk fast and my brain is slower, so... Uh, I'm going to say no to that, Ronald, mostly because I don't have the time for that sort of thing. I'm mostly editing or, you know, recording and doing stuff, but um, it's an interesting concept, and for people who have the discipline to do that sort of thing, I have nothing but respect for, so uh, you do you. Thank you very much. Shadow Reaper asks, what was your first video game? I believe I mentioned this uh, before. I don't mind re-answering questions, by the way, so don't worry about, you know, submitting something I may have answered before. Um, it was actually Alex Kidd in Miracle World for the Sega Master System, because the version I had had that video game built in, and being an impatient child at the time, I turned it on without a game in, and it just booted up. Uh, if you want to get technical, I guess my first boxed game would be the Master System version of Sonic the Hedgehog, which I'm a big fan of, but um, otherwise it would be Alex Kidd, and I'm pretty, uh, pretty psyched that it's getting a remake, actually, so I might actually check that out. Not sure if I'll bring it to HFC, but uh, just putting it out there. Thank you, Shadow Reaper. Gold member again. What would be your big dream game collection or a wish for Zelda 35th anniversary? Honestly, Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD coming to Switch would be enough. Just being able to play those games on the go would be pretty fantastic. We've got uh, Skyward Sword HD coming soon. And uh, it's going to be interesting to play that with regular controls. Hopefully they uh, work, for lack of a better word. So, uh, And uh, besides that, re-releases of stuff like Minish Cap and whatnot on the bloody not virtual console would be cool. So uh, yeah, I'm going to like cross my fingers and uh, see what's what. Thank you, Gold. Crawl again. Hey, Tom, you've played a lot of game in your time, I bet. You'd be correct there. But has there ever been a game you wanted to play in the past but didn't and now wish you could? A lot of, like, late 80s, early 90s PC stuff, because um, I used to watch Spoony ones, like, reviews of stuff like uh, Privateer, Wing Commander, and stuff like that, and I would get nostalgic for, like, a period of time that, well, A, I wasn't alive for, or B, was too young to play on PC, and C, didn't have a good enough PC to play them. So, uh, yeah, that whole period. And I guess my love of adventure games spawned very early on in life, so... Um, a whole genre for you there, Crawl. Thank you. Royal D. Rankin asks, Favourite Dragon Ball villain and why? Hmm. Well, there's a lot to choose from here. You know, I'm going to be a bit boring and say Freezer, because I find him to be very compelling. He's manipulative. He can be very childish at times, but not to the extent that, like, Boo can be. And, you know, just be a parody, essentially. And, you know, he's got all those forms and the rivalry with Goku. And, you know... Cell had a rivalry with Goku, but I felt it was more personal with Freezer because obviously Freezer took out Goku's race. So, um, final answer, Freezer. Thank you, Ronald. Shadow Reaper asks, "What is your favorite cheese?" Did you just ask me what my favorite cheese is? Yes, I did. <laughs> I'd love some cheese. Thank you. Uh, um, I'm gonna be boring and say cheddar. Or if we're talking like spreadable cheeses, something akin to the Laughing Cow or Philadelphia, stuff like that. I like a good spreadable cheese. Thank you, Shadow, for your question. Well, we're rapidly making our way through this backlog now, guys. Goal member again. What new or returning feature would you want for Kingdom Hearts 4? More summons, honestly. You know, if you're not going to make a world out of, say, 
God forbid, home on the range, have the free cows or even the horse there as a summon. I think that would be pretty fun. So, uh, yeah, more summons, please. Ronald again. Favourite 90s cartoon show? Oh, God, there's so many. There's so fucking many. Um, probably Pokemon, honestly. Like, that's late 90s, but still. Um, I'd be here all day. Otherwise, oh, Gargoyles. Gargoyles are very much up there as well. So, uh, yeah, Gargoyles and Pokemon, mostly. Shadow Reaper again. Since keto seems to be working out for you, tell us a few keto meals that you recommend. Well, this is funny. Again, backlog. But I've since gone off keto. Uh, I lost a stone doing that, but uh, now I'm intermittent fasting, uh, which means you eat during a set period of the day, like during eight hours, and then not anymore until the next day. So, um... Keto meals, um, stuff like greens, cauliflower, uh, grilled chicken, grilling, very good. Stuff like that. Try to avoid like baked beans or sauces or stuff like that, which is you know high in sugar and carbs. But do remember that it's low carbs for keto. It's not no carbs. So as long as you don't go over, say, 30 net carbs a day, you should be fine, honestly. You know, feel free to treat yourself every so often, but don't overdo it. Thank you, Shadow. Crawl12 asks, with the announcement of Pokemon Legends, see, we're catching up there, and the whole feudal Pokemon style, is there any other region that you think would be cool to visit, Tom? For me, it would be Alola. Um, you know, I'm a Johto babby, so Johto would be the obvious answer, but, hmm, I won't mind revisiting Kalos in, like, the Sword and Shield style. I think it was let down by the limitations of the 3DS, and I think having a b more fulfilling 3D vision would suit it much better. So, yeah, final answer, Kalos. Maybe we could get some, like, Pokemon French Revolution stuff going on in there. That'd be cool. Thank you, Cruel. All right, last set of questions now, guys. Nocturne Privigini asks, Have you tried your hand at Dungeons & Dragons before? Uh, I believe I've talked about this before as well. Um... No, I've been as far as to have been given a character sheet to fill stuff in. Um, Great Zombie Ron, once upon a time, tried to get me into the thing, but uh, I was quite depressed at that time. I hadn't started medication, so I just wasn't mentally capable of like doing something that social. But I just loved the idea of Dungeons and & Dragons and the whole role-playing thing. I don't know if I'd go so far as to lob, but uh, I have a very good imagination, so this sort of thing always appeals to me. And I love listening to Spoonie. Uh, his counter monkey stories and whatnot. Whether they're true or not is up for debate, but I find him to be a good storyteller and that sort of thing. Just, you know, tickles my imagination. So thank you, Nocturne. Ben Smith asks, What's the game you're looking forward to the most and least for the Adaptathon? Since licensed games tend to bite the big one, that is. Well, it's funny you say that, since uh, with the Adaptathon, we try to mostly go for good games. Like, you'll find that Superman 64 isn't there or anything like that. But uh, just looking at the list here, uh, I'm excited to play Arkham Asylum again. Uh, let's have a look here. Peter Jackson's King Kong, I'm going to be playing for the first time. Uh, Steven Universe, Save the Light. Uh, we have a full playthrough of that on the channel, that's good. Um, so yeah, stuff like that. I don't really have a least favourite, I pick games that I wanted to play, so do that and we'll raise some money for a good cause. That's happening July 3rd, by the way, guys, so uh, please tune in and give if you can, it's all for a good cause. Gold member asks, with so many rumours of a Switch Pro flying about, what upgrades would you like to see for Nintendo to warrant selling the system at $400? A slight boost in power, at the very least. Like, I've heard rumours of an OLED screen, and, you know, just stuff like that, that I guess would be nice, you know, better quality screen, but more power to enable, you know, better ports of one on the thing would be nice, and maybe some, you know, better handling Nintendo exclusives. You know, maybe we can go above 30 frames. I know it's scary for games like Zelda and so on, but we can do it, guys, I promise you. Ronald asks, what are some of your favourite animated superhero movies? Well, obviously, Spider-Verse, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, gotta go with the uh, the big one, first and foremost. But animated superhero films, you know, I don't think I have many, actually. Um, yeah, I think it's mostly just gotta be Spider-Verse and the rest of the live action, so, yeah. Shadow Reaper asks, and this is the penultimate question, if Microsoft succeeds in their desire to buy out Discord, would you move away from Discord, looking at what they did to Skype? And if so, what platform? No clue. I would rather stay with Discord, and just hope to God that Microsoft don't butcher it the way they did Skype. I know, I know, I'm too optimistic for my own good, but uh, this is just how I like to live my life, so yeah. 
Final question from Krull12. Hey Tom, I know you're not a horror guy like me, but hypothetical, you have a gun to your head and have to pick a horror game to commentary about for the channel, with any co-com of your pick. What game would that be? It would probably be one of the Five Nights at Freddy's games, because, you know, it's easy to mock the concept since, you know, there's so many videos of people screaming into the camera about it, but I just like the whole management aspect of it, and I think, like, that there's a lot of good lore to chew on and just to discuss while things are happening. It would probably have to be a post-commentary thing where I record the footage and then talk over it with other people, because doing that live when I have to concentrate would be a nightmare. And don't get me started on 4 where you have to be extra attentive, otherwise you get screamed at by a nightmare. But, um, yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's final answer. And uh, now we're all caught up with the backlog, guys, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Entom Opens Up. I'm actually looking to take suggestions for what I should open up on the next episode, which will be whenever, you know, I have a decent amount of questions and uh, just have the money to purchase the product. So, do you want to see, like, Pokemon cards? Do you want to see some more, like, blind boxes and so on? Maybe Magic the Gathering? Let me know. And uh, let me know what amiibo you guys have collected, if any. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Entom Opens Up. Bye-bye.